Do you want to learn a new language and you have no time to do so? Well, if so, this video is for you. Hi, welcome. My name is Stephanie and I love language learning and I share my tips and tricks about how I've learned so many languages on this channel. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome. I love to have you here. Um, today's topic is actually inspired by what many people ask me when I tell them that I speak many languages, which is how I find time to do so. And I've also had quite a few questions that I've answered on TikTok about this same topic about you know, how it is that you can find time within the day if you're super busy. And I think that most of us are really busy and are wondering like what to do and how to find time for learning a language or picking up really any new skill. So what do we do? Well, the first thing that we have to realize is that we have way more time than we know. Usually there's this misconception that we don't really have time for um, any habit that we want to pick up, but in this case, language learning. So what I mean by that is that usually within the day, we have a lot of time that we don't even realize how it's passing us by. Um, we go through our day sometimes almost unconsciously. So when it comes to not having time, there's obviously that big chunk of it that is actually your real actual responsibilities that you have in your life that can be of any nature. But then there's also that perception of not having time. And it's usually down to two things. Like if we think about it, most of us, whenever we come up with an excuse of why we don't have time to do something, it's usually one, it's not a priority. Or two, you're not really aware of your time and how you're spending it over the day. And then there's those big time sinks that you're not even paying attention to. So in the first case, if it's not a priority, I don't think I should be going too much into depth on that because I think like if you're watching this video, it is a priority for you and you do want to make time for language learning. So it can really be something as simple as making sure that it's not just a priority in your head, but you're actually acting as if it's a priority. So put some time in your calendar to dedicate to language learning if you find that otherwise you're not going to prioritize it. You know, plan ahead, integrate it in your life, consider it in terms of your other obligations and put it down on the calendar. Usually with language learning, and you know, I think a lot of people have said this, but it is a cliche for a reason. I do believe it's true. With language learning, it's better to learn a little bit every day or every other day or however often you have it in your schedule than to have like this one big chunk of learning every once in a while. Um, so 15, 20 minutes to half an hour here and there are much better than a big three hour session. Of course, you can have those big sessions if you want, but I mean, consistency is more important than being swamped by the new language all at once. That being said, if you have the second type of problem where you're not really aware of how much time you're wasting on say social media or just like scrolling uh, and browsing online or um, say, you know, idly watching TV or anything like that. There can be so many time things. I'd say a great thing to do is to start paying attention to how you spend your time during the day. And thankfully with technology, which is, I believe like is the biggest time thing for many of us, thankfully, there's a lot of uh, screen time and analytics right now. And so that's very easy to do. It's very easy to just go in and see how much time you spend on whatever your app of uh, choices where you like to waste time. And it's amazing when you pay attention to that. I was, I was shocked to see where I was spending my time and, and I was feeling that I don't have time. And then I open screen time and I see just how much I'm spending on things that I don't care about. And I don't even know why I'm scrolling there. So I think when it comes to technology, that kind of information Information that more and more companies are providing us with now is uh, is amazing and it's great to take back your time and realize where it's going and what you're spending it on. So when it comes to things that are non-technology based, I think it's it's a little bit harder because you need to be um, you know more aware of your time and actually pay attention and become super aware of how you spend your time. But the good news here is that I think there's very few such activities that that we waste time on that are you know non-technology linked nowadays because technology provides such a huge dopamine hit that most of us are hooked on those things and not on things that are happening in the real world. So I think if you have other times things that are not on on a screen. Uh, there are not as many, they're not as common, and it's just, it takes a little bit of being aware of your time. So become more aware, figure out where you spend your time, observe for a few days, a week, a couple of weeks, where you spend your time, do some tracking up front so you can see how much time you can actually free up once you're aware of your patterns, once you're aware where you waste time. 
for those of you that are watching this and are thinking, okay, great, I am super aware of my time, I am very organized, very productive, I prioritize, I plan, I know wh what my time sinks are and I'm avoiding them, but I still have a lot going on in my life, what do I do? So yes, many of us are very, very busy with our lives, right? Because we have uh, a lot of other things that we want to do. We have our social lives, we have our other hobbies, we have um, jobs and school and children. Maybe we have all of those things at the same time because I have a, I have a full-time job currently. I used to be an MBA student before that. And throughout all of that time, I was able to find time for language learning. And the way that I have been able to do this is by utilizing my dead time. And I think we all have that time throughout the day that we can use for language learning. Not all language learning activities are suitable for that time, but usually whenever your mind is free to learn, but you're otherwise occupied, you can take advantage of that. So the classic examples are whenever you're waiting somewhere, say at the bank, doctor's office, whatever it is, you're waiting, you have some time, you can utilize it for that. Or whenever you have um, some sort of an idle activity that doesn't really engage you that much on a mental level. Say, for example, you're cleaning your house, you are brushing your teeth, you're making breakfast, you are um, doing like an elaborate skincare routine, or you're working out. And working out doesn't work for everybody because sometimes people want to disconnect during their workout time. But if you're okay with you know learning a language while you're working out, you can also do that. So a lot of those either times during the day where your mind is not as engaged, you can be doing another activity and at the same time be listening to a podcast or to music in your target language or to an audiobook listening is great as it's, it can actually be done when you're walking your dog when you're doing work around the house when you're commuting when it's like a lot of activities and a lot of dead time throughout the day that can be utilized for listening so focus mostly on listening if you're super busy because there's so many opportunities to do it and then every once in a while when you actually have time to dedicate to language learning a bit more when you actually have time to sit down and um, you know, do some exercises, read a book or watch a movie, whatever it is, then you can do that. But other, otherwise, throughout the entire time, you can focus on listening and not worry about missing a day because there's always some time. Even you know, when you are getting ready in the bathroom every morning, even if it only takes you five minutes to do that, that's five minutes every morning, likely five minutes every evening. Then there's probably some time when you're like walking around and you can listen as well. There's probably some time when you're doing something mindless that you can squeeze in some listening. So from that point of view, it's an amazing activity to do. And the last tip, if you're super pressed for time, is to find a way to do your activities in another language. So there are some things that you usually do in your life. For example, you could be reading or watching or listening to the news every single day. Many people are. So instead of doing that in your native language or in a language that you speak really well, you can do it in your target language. Take that activity and convert it into your target language. If there is a book that you really wanted to read for a while, you can do that in your target language instead of your native one. I really wanted to read a book by Stephen Hawking. Uh, I've always wanted to kind of pick up some of that. I, I find that type of subject matter very interesting and it's also non-fiction, which is great for reading because it's just much easier to understand than a complicated expressions in fiction in general. So instead of buying it in Bulgarian or English or another language that I speak really well, I decided to get that book in French so that I could get some French practice. Another thing that is good to do is if there's a movie or a TV show you really want to see, chances are, even if it's not made in your target language, you can find it dubbed somewhere. Or say you watch a lot of workout videos on YouTube, why don't you watch ones in your target language? Or if you want to take some online course, you want to learn another new skill. If you want to learn some new skill or get some training for your job or just really any type of online learning, chances are you're going to be able to find uh, the course or program that teaches that skill in another language instead of your own. So yes, it's, it can be very challenging because you're picking up a new skill but and, and then you're also doing it in a, in a language that you're not very comfortable with. But if you really don't have time, it's like killing two birds with one stone. So it's a great idea to do. So try to think a little bit about those activities that you, you do every day anyways. See if you can do them in another language. See if it's possible to switch and to make sure that 
you're still doing the stuff you would be doing anyways day by day like you know the examples i gave like the news reading an article um reading a research paper for school you're still doing all of those things but if you can get that information if you can do those activities in another language wouldn't it be better wouldn't that mean that you have so much time now for both language learning and to do your usual activities take a look at your routine take a look at your habits and see which ones you can convert into opportunities for language learning do you need to do workout classes several times a week? Do you need to read the business news every day to stay on top of your industry? Those are great opportunities to combine with language learning because they are things that you would normally do anyways. And that frees up a lot of time in your life to do all of the things you want to do while at the same time making sure that you don't get burned out, that you don't, you know, that you don't do it at the expense of other activities and a free time and of leisure, etc. So all in all, I believe that on the one hand, we all have much more time than we realize, just as long as we're um, aware of that and aware of how we spend our time. And then on the other, I think that even the busiest of us have some time that can actually be utilized for language learning, time that is not engaging the brain as much and that we can use in order to engage it and to learn a language or time that can be spent on non-negotiable activities that can be transferred into our new language. If you have um, specific tips or tricks that you want to share, please leave them in the comments um, because I, I love to learn from other people on time management and you know how to find time for the things we love. So please let me know. And then also if you have other concerns that I didn't cover in this video, also let me know. I would love to help you out. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and would want to see more from me. And as always, I wish you the best of luck with your language learning and I'll see you soon.